Oh, now we're live. Yeah, oh, now we're wow. live. We're live, pal. I need, a, I need a clapper to go live. Super duper. Um, Mike Dickham might have to... Uh, Mike Dickham might have to shift over. He's he's dominating the space. He looks like you look like you're adhering to him. Like, you're, <laughs> yeah, like you're in the meeting like room with Mike Ditka. Like he's... I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> I don't mean to be in your way, Mr. Ditka. Uh, he's a mustache mountain guy. Oh, like yeah, we do, uh, maybe after the show today, we'll, uh, go through the, see if we get set up the yeah, bracket. Yeah, we'll, we'll do, uh, we'll do the, we, I mean, we'll see the bracket and put it on, on, on the YouTube side. I really, like, I, I fumbled. Ah, to use a football term, I fumbled. Oh, sound is good. The launch of the, uh, of the, the YouTube exclusive portion over the weekend, because I was like, ah, don't feel like doing this. <sighs> uh, so here we are, um, we, we got some people in the, yeah, in yeah. the, in the room, so. Let's just start um, episode ten. It's a milestone. Look at this ten. It's the uh, the Dillinger episode. Ten. Uh, welcome back. Yesterday was an awesome episode. Uh, I hope I have the 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 core strength to get through this one because <laughs> it's gonna be. I, I imagine it's gonna be a lot of heavy lifting. Like the score nineteen ninety one set. It's huge. There's just so many like common cards. Uh, but it's we're in the high time for. I'm very for optimistic. I'm You're optimistic. Very optimistic. If we get a Griffey in this one. It's gonna be awesome. Um, hey, Griffey won that. Uh, well, of course, I don't is have this anybody. This home run derby. Runs. This was his. I think this was his first home run derby, and I think he won it in spectacular fashion. That swing dog. Yeah, he's the best. He's the best. So, uh, as I said before, 1991 score. Uh, little. Little loose pack, loose pack sealed, one. totally sealed, but not a not a tight pack. Um, again, score will uh, you be recalling the previous score pack set that we opened up? How it had like a uh, the the Twinkie little little blue Twinkie type open on the back. Sixteen player cards plus one Magic Motion mm. trivia card per pack. Oh, that's that stupid thing, right? Yeah, I'll be throwing that in the river. Uh, all right, producer Matt, tell me what we got. Okay. Oh, so by the way, ahead. before you even start, uh, take that back. Look at the uh, the the price. The price on that one, uh, sixty nine. <laughs> I know it's a kid show. All right. So the score nineteen ninety one. First of all, eight hundred and ninety three total cards in the set. So many. We're gonna get so many. Like backup catchers. There's there's uh, subsets within the actual uh, total set of cards. Me and Mike were talking about it. Yeah, earlier. yeah. So uh, for instance, like there, we're looking for a Jose Canseco Dream Team card. Uh, on that card, he's pictured in only jeans, brother. Yeah. But the Dream Team uh, was like a subset in this set of cards. Yeah, and everybody was topless. Uh, there's a bunch of Ken G Ken Griffey Jr. cards that we're looking for. He appears on eight different cards in yeah. the set. Yeah. Yeah. Also, raises the stakes, is, raising raising the possibility we, we will get a, a Griffey. But <laughs> there's also a uh, a Bo Breaker Bo Jackson card that we're looking for. Apparently, a very popular card from this set. Bo Breaker. There's a Nolan Ryan card. We've done well with Nolan Ryan before. So yeah. Gonna, hopefully he's, he's we'll, there uh, in a in a holder. Hopefully we'll we'll catch on to that. And then uh, there's two rookies that you were looking for: Chipper Jones and Mike Mussina. Yes. Yes. So without further ado, Michael, I'm gonna start. I'm going to open this up. Uh, thanks again to uh, our benefactor, Todd Cohen. For, Thank you, uh, Todd. For the pack. This is uh, this is 1991. And... Ah, okay. The first card off the top is a... Get that out of there. Um, the third time that we've got Tracy, Tracy Jones... Jones. <laughs> Did I tell you something about commons? Uh, before you could, did anybody pre-buy this pack? No, no. This is up for grabs. The cards themselves are up for grabs. Uh, if anybody wants to buy this and the other Tracy Jones, uh, and has three cents, uh, feel free. Uh, any anybody that's related to Tracy Jones, uh, what can be said about Tracy Jones that already has it? A million times. Yeah, uh, here he's a Mariner. This is the third Tracy Jones card in the third uniform that he's been in. I'm getting a weird glare. So. Are you getting a weird glare? Yeah, let me see if I can fix it real quick. Okay. It's Just not going to fix. Point it towards Ditka. 
It's too sunny outside. I think we also had Bill Spires before. Um, I I recall seeing a Bill Spires. Uh, somebody said an All Star a few times. So uh, good for the research. Was it Bill Spires was a Chris Spires. I like the uh, the cards. Yeah, no, it's a good stock. It's it's again. I think this was one of the things that Tops was certainly lacking in the seventies. Like you could feel a seventies or early 80s card that came out of the pack, and it was sort of like you really wanted to handle it with care to, to protect it. These ones, are, you know, the, the cardboard on them, like you really got to do a number to, to bend it. I won't do that to the to the great Lee Smith. Um, I feel like who is another one of the, player that One of the probably. most intimidating. No, we don't, we don't have a Lee Smith. We wanted a Lee Smith in 1982 because that was his rookie and it was worth gobs of money. But uh, Lee Smith, one of the most intimidating men uh, to ever take the field in... The late innings uh, was a mercenary out on the uh, as a closer, uh, a rugged looking tough man. Um, there he was with the Cardinals, uh, Red Sox, Cubs, Red would Sox, have been a Cubs, yeah, Cubs, uh, Cubs was the beginning of his career. So, uh, good for you, Lee Smith. Um, hey, I'm surprised his glove isn't studded with diamonds and this guy isn't doing a moonwalk because that's Mike Jackson. <laughs> you get it. Um, another, <laughs> another Seattle Mariner, another, you know, tip of the tip of the cap to uh, the Seattle Mariners. Great, great hat. For a great hat. Uh, you know, it's still one of the best uniforms. Uh, Mike Jackson, relief pitcher, probably would have been a seventh or eighth inning. May close a little bit. Um, Again, his name is Michael Jackson, so I wonder if he could sing in the shower. Three saves in the year uh, prior. All right, so he's a setup guy. He's your he's your middle reliever. All right, here's a specialty card. Here we go. Guys, it's Ken Caminiti, the rifleman. Boy, you're going to want to see the back. You're going to want to see the back of this card. <laughs> that's a nice-looking boy there. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's that that uh, that accentuation on that specialty. Like with the background and the and the kind of isolated player, but yeah, look at the picture on the back of that and show oh the boy. show the folks at home, um, real bit close up, like beefy, beefy Ken Caminiti there, like pretty bloated. Um, He's got the long the the long eighties in the back. Yeah, a little little bit of a mud flap, but uh, yeah, Ken Caminiti. Uh, I, I guess he was. This was probably the beginning of his. Uh, his upward mobility when it came to uh, on the field exploits. Um, excuse me, I'm having a little bit of Bud Light seltzer burps there. Bud Light clear boys. Um, our next guy here, hey Yankee fans, uh, you're gonna you're gonna get it now. Uh, Mike Witt. I don't remember Mike Witt playing for the Yankees. I remember we, Mike we, Witt. We pulled a Mike Witt card. We did not. Are you sure? We did not. You're thinking of other California Angel pitcher, Jeff Zahn. We did pick a, a Jeff Zahn out, but um, and there's a good story about Jeff Zahn and uh, Bob Boone picking off and uh, catching Ricky Henderson stealing, uh, probably more than any combination. All right, but uh, but yeah, uh, Mike Witt. Are we are we going it's to high check time. how tall is Mike Witt? How tall is Mike Witt? Let's get it in on the uh, in the chat. Mm -hmm. Mike Witt. Mike Witt. I'm gonna go six foot four. Six foot four is the guess. It's my guess. Anybody else, please. Copy my answers. Michael Don't copy Corby, my answer. six foot five. Six foot Marianne, five. six foot one. Okay. All right. Always on the short side, man. Todd Cohn, three uh six three. Three three six. <laughs> Mike Mita is six six. Herve Village has. Andrew Hines, six two. Oh, all right. The uh the winner the winner is me. It's not you. What it is, is Mike price? Muniz. Wow, six foot seven. So Price is Right rules. He's six. He's another one. Six foot seven. How is him? I keep picking guys that Tim are six Stoddard. foot seven, and nobody's Tim picking Stoddard up and on Mike it. Witt. The Yankees really they they corner the market on tall pitchers. Wow, six foot seven. Jeez, Mike Witt. Uh, threw a perfect game as a California Angel. Uh, hey, more Yankees guys. Uh, here's the Yankees catcher Bob Guerin. Here's what you're expecting. Bob Guerin, catcher, uh, was a manager in the major leagues. Well-respected um, 
catcher, well-respected uh, uh, kind of brain for the game, I guess. Uh, here's your fact of the day. Right around this time, early part of the 90s, late part of the 80s, Bob Guerin and his family were on a week's worth of episodes on Family Feud. Oh. Not as a celebrity, like it wasn't like no, they oh, were just legitimately on. Bob Guerin, like and I'd be like, who the hell is Bob Guerin? No, he was legit. Like his family made it onto Family Feud, and there are episodes that I've seen where the Guerin family gets. Not only do they win the episode that they're on, they win I think another one or two episodes, um, and uh, and there was Bob Guerin in all his resplendor. Uh, probably would have been, uh, you know, a year or two into his. It looked like he had a lot of. A lot of family members, so maybe it was a little bit later. Maybe it was it was uh, uh, Ray Combs was the host. Um, God rest his soul, Ray Combs. I wish I knew who that was. He was the host of the Family Feud. The original host. And then, no, 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 that oh, was no, that no, was no, Richard second, Dawson, second host, second host of the Family Feud. Uh, hung himself. I know. It's I'm bringing everybody down. It's a real sad. It's a real bummer. I know Ray Combs. I know Ray Combs. Yeah. <laughs> Boo. Hey. Rookie card. Here it comes. Okay. Mets catcher. Mets third baseman. Mets outfielder. Todd Hundley. Uh, a uh, certainly a guy that I remember a lot about because I I always rooted for Todd Hundley. I always wanted Todd Hundley to be a little bit better than he actually was. Before Mike Piazza, Todd Hundley was your help. Your you know your guy behind the plate. Your hard nosed catcher had some pop in his bat. Uh, could throw a few guys out. Certainly, um, seeing a rookie card of his, that's, you know, or a rookie prospect card, whatever, you know, however they're going to they're gonna tout it in this set, certainly is a, uh, that's a good thing. Played for uh, Clint Hurdle in Jackson in the minor leagues. Aha! Uh-huh. Before Clint Hurdle became a manager unto his own, right? Yes. Clint Hurdle was, uh, yeah, Jackson was the double A team for the Mets for a long time. He had uh, been, I think he's 22 in the 91 season. Ah, ah, wow, so he's a real, real young boy. I think another real young boy here. Um, brother of Alex Cora of Infamy. Joey Cora. Joey Cora. I remember a Joey Cora. Joey Cora. Um, a play long, long time. These Cora brothers were in yeah. Major League Baseball for quite some time. Um, upwards of 10 to 15 years. Uh, so never, you know, just kind of putzed around the league, got bounced. I, again, here he's a Padre. He went to, uh, maybe the Red Sox for a bit. Brewers, I feel like, uh, yeah, bounced around a few places. Um, could have been a Met. One of those cores was a Met. Um, I don't know, like, is there... Uh, any stats on his brother and the ability of him to bang a trash can real hard to uh, <laughs> to steal a sign or two. Um, but yeah, I mean, Joey Cora, he's there. What's your... Well, I was just going to say, uh, short boy. We're not guessing his height. No, 5'8". We'll, uh, we'll skip a few here. He's 5'8". Uh, here we go. Here's the St. Louis Cardinals uh, relief pitcher, Scott Terry. This is a real relief pitcher heavy. He was probably the setup guy for... Uh, for Lee Smith uh, in these years. So this is this a nice nice combination of guys. Like One, if, two for the Cardinals. Yeah. I mean, if I was collecting St. Louis Cardinals, this would be a pretty good uh, pretty good packet and a couple guys. Um, Thin mustache? If yeah, I, I can't even on see On the back. Here. On the back, I think you'll see a, a little bit closer view of the mustache. Yeah, so. very thin. And he's got the, uh, the scruff. Buzz like, off. This is like such a... Uh, so, such a nod to how they dressed in like the late eighties, early nineties, because mm. he's wearing a turtleneck. A turtleneck, yeah. Under well, his, uh, these pictures were taken during spring training, so there might have been a bit of a nip in the air. Or that's a road uniform. Maybe that was like early part of the season or late part of the season before. Maybe they were in San Francisco because it was deadly cold in San Francisco at the stick. Um, here we go. Uh, I believe this was an all-star pitcher, Neil Heaton. Neil Heaton. That's a good name for a professional athlete. Neil Heaton, left-hander, uh, was an all-star for the Pittsburgh Pirates in 1989. 89 or 90. 
he was. The, I remember I was watching some uh, some All Star game uh, introductions. I remember Neil Heaton getting the nod. He looks like he's man the ball. Yeah, no, he was he was a, a he was a decent pitcher. Um, I don't think he was a decent pitcher for a long time, and I think Yankee fans will probably remember him. I think he did have a stint uh, as a Yankee at some point. Maybe not at this point, but maybe later in his uh, major league career. Uh, he has a new, he had a new grip coming into the season, which he called a screw knuckle change. Mm, that's a lot of words. A screw knuckle change. Didn't you have change. one of those? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was a wild thing, and it was a, a dust of cocaine as well. Uh, this <laughs> here we go. This is a good pack. I I encourage you, Yankee fans, to get in here late Ooh. and bid on this one. Oh. Your friend, it's Paul O'Neill, everybody. This is when I liked Paul O'Neill. I really like Cincinnati Reds, Paul O'Neill. Um, call me selfish. It's it's just, you know, he was a humble guy to start off with. I ended up being a humble guy. You know, I'm not going to disparage uh, uh, Paul O'Neill too much. But, uh, but yeah, certainly uh, I liked watching his career come up. He was he was a good uh, a good outfielder, get a cannon for an arm out of left. Um, could hit you the home runs, came, came in in the clutch. Um, again, part of that Reds uh, 1990 uh, uh, they, they, team that went to the World they were Series. Pretty, they were pretty red hot. Uh, apparently, <laughs> red hot in the first you half. To do in that. the first before the All Star break, he went four. Uh, he went four for four four times. Whew, yeah, no, he absolutely or three times. I'm sorry, three times. Well, maybe once after. Um, but no, pretty. Uh, Pretty good player. Okay. Um, this is the trivia. Uh, this is the, the, the eye chart trivia. Don't, let's not waste too much time. Another repeater to our uh, our leader of the pack, uh, Craig Def Lefferts. I believe we got him in the 1987. And he was still a Padre. He was a Padre then. He's a Padre now. Um, Craig Lefferts, uh, relief pitcher. Um, the, again, the, the other thing that I like about these cards and the way that they kind of present the stats, it is kind of paragraphy on the back, but it, it kind of, you know, the, the colors really, uh, allow it to pop and it's a little bit better to read for my aging old man eyes. Um, despite the corrective lenses that I wear. Yes, we have had a few stashes. Uh, Mustache Mountain is now going to be a separate YouTube series. Right, right. But yes, yeah, yeah, Craig Lefford's better stash on the back. I think the back of the cards really get you yeah. the real close-up. Like, these are, score was good with action shots, and they were like, all right, here he is in the windup, or here he is, like, halfway through his at-bat. The catchers are, like, or blocking the plate, or, you know, firing a ball off to second. So they, they do a nice job with these uh, these action shots. But yeah, the the yearbook photos, as they were, uh, as they would be known, Born in are definitely... Uh, uh, Communist Germany. Oh, oh. Just West, nice. West Germany. Oh, West. Oh. Well, that no, West Germany is a good one. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then by all means, you know. All right. They can't no. see what I'm doing. Back no, here. don't. I don't want to see it either. Uh, uh, no relation to uh, to Bob from Bob's Burger, but Tim Belcher. I like it. Tim Belcher. Did you ever hear my Bob from Bob's Burger? No, I want to hear it. Yeah, come on, just let it out there. A head teddy. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, Tim Belcher. Um, it's a pretty good one. It's a pretty good Bob from Bob's Burgers. Uh, Tim Belcher. Tim Belcher. Yeah, Tim Belcher, relief pitcher for the Dodgers. Big, uh, you know, big hype when he came into the league, um, and uh, and kind of rounded out a pretty decent uh, pitching staff for the uh for the Dodgers. Eventually Todd Warrell, the world famous Todd Warrell, uh ended up uh a Los Angeles Dodger. And uh I think him and Belch met of uh maybe Belcher moved to the to the starting rotation at that point. Either way. Uh either way. These are all things of, uh, I'm making up. One of the first major league pitchers to throw a complete game in the nineteen ninety season. Mm, okay. Uh three hit one nothing shutout over the Padres on the second day Major League season. What do you get in there? Tim Belcher, world famous hero. I'm a really good card reader. You, yeah. <laughs> Nothing gets by you. Um, I think another repeat guy here. Uh, this time as a 
Texas Ranger, Gary Pettis. Uh, I believe we had him when he was an angel. Yes. In one of those 88 or 89 sets. Um, I think I said that he kind of looked like a praying mantis. Sisterhood um, of the Traveling Pettis. Ooh. Wow. He's a, he's a little bit of a journeyman. He's going to get a Pettis cure. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yes, uh, uh, lanky, wiry. Uh, I think we gave him enough accolades the last time. No, uh, so. no relation to Boise State great Austin Pettis. Uh, I don't think it's going to say that on the back of his no, car. No, no, no. Because I think all. Austin Pettis is, uh, is much younger than Gary Pettis. At this point, he played for the Angels, Tigers, and the Rangers. So Getting his, uh, getting his travel miles in. Also, uh, the only person I put upside down on the Playing website. probably uh, in Texas tax breaks from ball players who play in Texas. Oh, yeah. That's, so, well, that's actually that's why a lot of NFL players of uh, decide to play there. Last guy. Mets first baseman, the man who took over for Keith Hernandez, the uh, hitting for average star that he was, Dave Magadan. Uh, Dave Magadan w- ended up being a uh, batting coach for the Boston Red Sox uh, later on. Dave Magadan, another guy that, that um, you know, uh, if the Mets had really built their lineup up better in the early part of the 90s. Well, let's put it this way. If there was a wild card in the early part of the 90s, the Mets would have been in the wild card a couple times. Magadan was a pretty uh, pretty pivotal guy. Um, decent at first base. I think he event- eventually got a little bit better with the glove. Um, but he was. De- I remember him as like, a, hey, he's a hit for average guy. Um, let's guess his height. Cause, um, I kind of flashed it there, but I don't think anybody could see he it. Could be, no, little... no, height no. check. Um, since we've got to get another height check on these guys. I'm going to go Dave Magadan. Uh, I think he's deceptively tall. I'm going to say he's uh, six foot tall. Okay. Below average height for a baseball player, as we determined yesterday. Patrick Madden height. nailed it first guess. Don't tell him. He, well, he's right. It's well, so everybody cool. else. Everybody else is typing their guesses in. Okay. They're just going to cheat off him. Well. Wow. You, you, I, listen, I was so hyped up that somebody got it first shot. Producer Matt. Not only, not producer only did Matt he get it, the first, he was the first person to type it in. And it was he's, right. he's reading the back of Dave Maggot and cards. Oh, see, now everybody else is... See, even after I gave it like 30 seconds, people are still typing in the wrong height. Wow. wow. Six foot three is the correct height. Six Patrick, foot three. Patrick Madden won the first ever height check. Okay. All right. That's not the first ever. We've done height well, checks. Well, I mean, he, he's the first ever winner of the height Just, check. Just, yeah, out of the, like, getting it, nailing it. Oh, he, do we have to give him $100 out of our pocket? No. No. <laughs> That's the aspect of the Price is Right that is that is not here. Uh, before we close out, tough. Uh, I will. I'm going to be the first. I'm going to bid ten dollars on this pack. Okay. All right. So if anybody wants it, I, I already bid out the ten. I, I would. I'll match it if somebody wants. All right. All right. Because uh, you have your eye on that Tracy Jones card. I, I, I want that Paul O'Neill card. You want that Paul O'Neill card? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Um, all right, ten bucks for this pack. That's pretty. That's that's solid. Uh, that's a solid contribution. You know where to donate. Of course. Or I'll send you the link to donate. But it's yeah. the the Pancreatic Cancer Foundation. Um, Todd is raising a, a good amount of money. Um, bravo to Todd. Uh, leader of the pack for this one. Um, it's. It, uh, do I go with Paul O'Neill? Do we go with the Rifleman? Do I go with the Rifleman <laughs> Ken Caminiti? Do I go with? Uh, we got a rookie card out of this. Uh, we got a Lee Smith. You're pointing at Lee. I think it's Lee Smith. Yeah, I I agree. Lee Smith stands out above all else. Um, I'm not gonna leave this. That's the one thing. Like I don't mind like sharing. You know, hey, everybody, jump in with your guesses or like. No, oh, we're, we not, gotta, we're not. We're not sharing. Not sharing the no, this, this isn't that's a democracy. Michael's. This isn't. This is not a democracy. Michael, this, Michael denies. I'm the dictator. The, um, the leader of the pack. Leader of the pack. Uh, I always give my little input. Subcategory, uh, I'm the, the mayor of Mustache Mount. Um, I'm the founder, you're the mayor. You bet, you bet. Uh, I think, as I like to say at the end of all these episodes, is that a show? I, I believe it's something close to a, a show. show. Okay, all right. I'm going to get back to drinking the rest of my uh, Bud Light Clear Boy. The strawberry Bud Light seltzer is a little refreshing today. Uh if anybody works for Bud Light and they want to sponsor the show, uh, uh, also my my wallet is open. Super random. I can any, be if anybody can read German, uh, Russian. Please let me know because mm. I have a question that I need answered. Okay, all right. But uh, yeah, sorry. Matt, Matt wants to know uh, if you know how to read Russian. Um, 
Do you, of course, you said, do you know how to read Russian on Facebook? And the correct answer is, of course, I have Facebook. Uh, that's a show. Um, next, next card pack up is this Donruss set. Uh, but we'll cover that. We'll cover that the next time. I won't, I won't hype it up too much, but it's another Donruss set um, from the 80s. Uh, so for myself, for producer Matt, and his strive to learn to read Russian... For plush tiny Mike Ditka, and as always, our spiritual leader and our master, the great Muta. Have a great night, everybody. See you next week.